This is Chapter 7 of Mastering ArcGIS by Mary Beth Price, copyright 2011. Geoprocessing and Map Overlay. Extraction Functions Overlay with Attributes. What is Overlay? Spatial joins are not always good a good solution to a problem. The features don't always fall neatly inside others. An overlay provides a way to split features so that there is always a one-to-one -one correspondence. Some problems with spatial joins. Gather statistics on the total length of roads in each land use category. We want to associate the land use type with the road and inside spatial join problem. However, the road does not stop at the land use boundary. A summarized join won't work with categorical data. A map overlay splits features. A map overlay forces the road features to split at the land use boundaries and each new segment falls inside one land use category. The tables can now be joined, providing a basis for calculating total lengths total road lengths in each land use category. Map Overlay combines two feature classes to create a new feature class containing information from both inputs. Both features and attributes may be combined. Here, each new polygon in the output contains both geology and ownership attributes. Overlay types. There are two major types of overlay that can be used. Extraction and overlay with attributes. Extractions, extraction functions combine the features but do not combine the tables. And these are clip and erase. We'll use clip quite extensively in this course. Overlay with attributes combines both features and the tables. And this includes intersection and union. Extraction functions. They're similar to select by location except that they can split features that cross the boundaries. A clip extracts features within the boundary. Erase keep features outside the boundary. And in this case, if we combine this image and think of these as layers, this layer and this layer, a clip would get just the interior. Whereas an erase would erase this out of this and leave us with that. Extracts, extraction functions extract portions of features based on an overlay layer. Clip keeps the features inside the feature boundary. Erase keeps the features outside the feature boundary. Roads are the input layer and the land use layer here is the clip layer. Clip and erase functions ignore internal boundaries and attributes in the clip layer. The entire region is used like a simple cookie cutter to extract features from within the input layer. The attributes of the input layer are simply brought through and unchanged. So this would be a clip. Length area and changes. Clip and erase can change the lengths or areas of features on the boundary. Geodatabase feature classes have a shape length and shape area fields that are automatically updated. All other length or area base fields are not updated. And therefore, we'd have to create a new field and calculate either area or length, depending on what we were looking for and what the layer was comprised of. Overlay with attributes. Join features based on a common location. It forces features to split when they overlap each other, creating new features. It forces a one-to-one -one cardinality between the features in order to join the attributes. Types of overlay. A union combines and keeps all features. An intersect combines features and keeps what is common to both. So let's go with the intersect. This combines features and keeps what is common to both of them. In the union, it combines and keeps all features. Steps to an overlay. Combine features spatially, producing all possible new features. Combine the attributes table, bringing original values from each table and assigning to each new feature. New spatial data set is created with features and the attribute table. 
as this image below depicts. Points and Polygons attaches land use polygon attributes to each school. For points and polygons, the overlay does the same thing as the spatial join. Lines and Polygons use intersect to associate the land use category with each road. A sum to give total length and then you sum to give the total length of each land use. Polygons and polygons combine spatial features by producing all possible polygons. Copy original values from both tables for each new polygon. Overlay types. Intersect keeps common areas. Union keeps all areas. Notice the difference between the top graphic on the right and the bottom graphic on the right. Intersect versus union. The purple is what we're looking for. A union example. Find combinations of geology and slope that are at high risk for landslides. And here we have the slope class and geology, geology, and we combine them. Intersect example. We have residential areas and Opichi formation. Find residential areas that are at the risk of radon infiltration from the Opichi formation. And we get the purples. Hazards mapping. We have residential areas, Opeechee formation, and then areas of both, and that is the purple, similar to what we looked at in the previous slide. Habitat analysis with intersect. We use queries to isolate features from of interest from the input layers and in intersect selection layers to find the common areas. And in this case, we're intersecting the elevation range, the limestone, and the dense conifer, coming up with the snail habitat. Output geometry choices. Intersecting polygons, you may choose polygons, lines, or points. Notice polygon, line, or points. Output dimension must be less than or the same as the lowest input dimension. Intersecting lines, you can choose lines or points. You obviously cannot choose polygon. Output geometries, intersecting polygons and lines. Overlay operation summary. And this is a good slide to maybe take a screen catcher of. Attributes are not joined in a clip and an erase. Attributes are joined in the intersect and the union, and it's nice to have all four of these on the same page. Other analysis functions, dissolve, buffer, and append and merge. Dissolving, dissolves lines on a street name. In this case, we're di dissolving a whole bunch of main street line segments into just one main street. In the bottom, we're dissolving polygons based on a habitat class. Or all the bees are going to join together to just be one bee polygon. And of course, the C's are dissolved. So we're dissolving the lines. Think of erasing those lines. Dissolving eliminates all of the attributes in the table except the dissolved one. However, you can choose to summarize the other attributes, the average crown, cover, percent, and then some acres. Buffering, one of the easiest to comprehend and to do, it constructs a polygon area within a specified distance of features. Here we have two buffers around a point, and here we have a buffer around a line, one buffer and these are actually dissolved. They are not individual buffers. Append. This function has many caveats and issues. Please read the help before attempting for the first time. Append places features from one feature class into an existing feature class of the same type. 
Unlike Union, it does not attempt to split or change features. The features are simply brought in. If they overlap, you'll have double features, which is a problem. To bring attributes with the features, the attribute tables of the two input layers should match exactly. I have not found a use for append. Ever. Merge. Very popular tool combines two feature classes of the same type into a new combined feature class. It does not attempt to split or change the features. Overlaps are permitted. You can use the field map option to control which input fields are included in the output feature class. The attribute tables can be different. This function also has many caveats and issues. Read the help before attempting it. And there is tool help on every one of these tools. Efficient overlay. Overlay is time and memory intensive. Minimize the number of features. Dissolve vegetation before intersecting with other layers. Slivers. These are tiny polygons created during geoprocessing and the result of slight differences in the boundaries. They can build up as a result of multiple operations and they can become a nuisance for some applications most of the time you deal with your slivers. Tolerance can be used to reduce the problems with your slivers. They're tricky to set and they're no good if they're too small and they'll degrade accuracy if they're too large. It affects the output layer only not the input layer. I don't think we have an issue with the slivers in any of our labs. Geoprocessing. We won't get into this uh, in this course most likely, but you may in a different course. Executing analysis functions and tools. Stringing together analysis functions to achieve a result. Geoprocessing environment. Familiar ways to execute functions using menus and toolbars, toolbars in addition to our toolbox. We'll use environmental settings quite often. And there are new ways to execute functions using a command line, creating new tools with Model Builder. So instead of using these tools that are provided, you create a new tool and you will also write scripts. Menus and toolbars. They provide quick access to many common functions. They're organized by topic and you may turn them on and off as needed as indicated over on this graphic. There are a lot more. You can turn on and off these toolbars. They're customizable and you'll see a plethora of menus. Our toolbox. There's hundreds of functions organized into tool sets. We'll examine these. You've probably already examined many of them in class. You can expand them by purchasing extensions in your own workplace. Here we have all of them, or nearly all of them. They run in ArcMap or Arc Catalog. Some work better in one or the other, and you'll get used to which that is. Many functions in the toolbox are not accessible from the menus and toolbars. You need to get into Map or into Toolbox to get to these functions. And again, you can create custom tool sets with your favorite tools and create your own tools. Environment settings, these are each a drop down to get you more information. They affect the output of tools and commands. We will need to use environment settings in this course. You set it at an application level or when running a specific tool. Application level settings are saved with the map documents so that if you go back to that map, they're already saved. If you do it in a tool, it is not saved. How do we set these? You go into either environments or you can go into a tool and click environments. These are application level settings and it affects all the tools and menus. If it, you're in a specific tool such as intersect, it's only one tool that you're dealing with. Useful setting, current and scratch workspace. Output coordinate systems and processing tolerances. Experiment with these on your own. In this course, I will not 
touch on too much the current and scratch workspace and there, the reasoning behind that is we won't be using geodatabases for the most part we'll get to that in 3.12 and 4.12 X and Y tolerance feature class property is set at the time it is created a minimum allowed distance between two vertices used to cluster nearby vertices during geometry operations such as clip, intersect, etc. The default setting is intended to preserve accuracy. We won't bother with XY tolerance in our labs. Using the tolerances, I'm going to skip effective tolerances. Just you can quickly pause and look at this slide if you'd like. Coordinate systems and geoprocessing. Geoprocessing often involves areas or lengths, so using a projected coordinate system is usually required for best results. 99% of the time, we'll use projected coordinate systems. If not otherwise defined, the output coordinate system defaults to the first data set input to the tool. Reprojections will be done during processing if needed, but is better to control if they are done and that means we need to keep all of our layers in the same coordinate system and same with our data for the most part. A good analyst is always aware of the coordinate system being used during processing. It should not be a mixture and it should not be a mystery. Best practices when developing a project choose a coordinate system instead of leaving data in a GCS or a chance mixture. Select a projection with minimal distortion for the study region. For the most part, Washington State Plains South is what we'll be using. Convert all data sets to the same coordinate system. See Chapter 11 before doing any analysis. That is exactly what we'll be doing in this course. Ensure that the data frame is always set to the same coordinate system as the data it contains. We'll also do this in this course. Background processing. This was introduced in ArcGIS 10. You continue working while a tool runs. It is on by default. We will have problems with the tools, so in one of our labs we are going to turn off background processing. And we will start to see these dialog boxes versus these. If I don't bring it up in class, please remind me that your computers are set for background and we're going to turn it off. It is uh, turned off permanently on my machine. More geoprocessing options. Under geoprocessing your recently used tools will show up which means you can get them get to them much more quickly and then to turn off background processing it would be great if you could do this on your own after watching this slideshow or even right now Go to geoprocessing options and background processing uncheck that box like it is shown there. Using a tool, and this is very, very important. To get to the tool, double click on it. So we double click on intersect and the tool pops up. There's multiple areas for input. An important button is the show help. This says hide help right now because help is being shown. It almost always is beneficial to have the help being shown on this area because it gives you an easy visual about your, what you're about to do. In addition, I will be requiring you to click on tool help to go deep into the tool help menu to find out how to use the tool most efficiently. So be aware for tool help and always have click on show help if it says show help and leave it saying hide help because the help is shown right over here. Searching for tools. You may search in the search window and find them based on the name or keyword and then there's even a button that says show me. You can hover for the description, click to open the tool and then see where the tool actually exists to help you find it later. When you first begin, it'll be difficult to find all of your tools. I will provide assistance 
at the very beginning and then you'll be able to remember where they are later in the course. Some analysis tools. The clip tool we've already talked about. You double click on clip, input your features. Right here you should have clicked show help so that the help popped out over on this right side. On the fly clipping, temporary clip applied to a map layout does not create new layers or affect lengths or areas of the source layers and it can be performed on many layers simultaneously and it can be removed when no longer needed. Set as a data frame property. However, I've never used it. Clipping data frame layers. You go to the data frame, you specify the shape, and then you clip. Again, never done that before. I've only used the clip tool, the real clip tool. Intersect tool. It's under overlay of analysis tools in your Arc toolbox. Again, show help should not be seen. You should click on that so that the help pops out. And then there will be a button for tool help to help you figure out how to use these tools. We'll go over each one the first time that they're introduced in each lab. Dissolve. Again, find it. Data management tools, generalization, dissolve. Set your inputs and proceed. We've already discussed Dissolve. Buffer tool we've already discussed, but this is what the toolbox looks like. Here is the None Dissolved option, and here is the All Dissolved option. I discussed this earlier, but you set that in the Dissolve type. I will tell you at the beginning of each... I will tell you when to dissolve and when not to dissolve the first few times and then you proceed. The default dissolve option on this tool is usually not the best choice. So be sure to set it as indicated in the lab documents. Lengths and areas of features. Areas and lengths. Areas or lengths and lengths are important. The total lengths of stream in each watershed. Total snail habitat area. Often tools change areas or lengths of features. We need to fix that. Remember, GeoDatabase shape area and shape length fields are automatically updated as you proceed with GeoDatabase data, such as a feature class. These will be updated. Other fields may contain areas or lengths that are not updated. Remember, it's just the shape area and shape length fields. Shape files never update any area or length fields automatically. If you have an area acre in a field, do not trust it. Or a length field, do not trust it in a shape file. You have to create a new field and calculate lengths, which is simple. You just have to perform the steps. Updating lengths after performing operations that can change geometry, such as a clip or intersect, recalculate any user-defined length or area. And in this case, you would add a new field, calculate geometry, and choose the area or length, and then the units that you would like it in. We'll do this, and we've actually done this most likely prior to this chapter. Model Builder. Very briefly going to discuss Model Builder because we will not use it in this intro class. It creates models from a sequence of tools and sometimes you can literally pull the tools in and connect them to connect several processes at once. These are typically not done for one-off projects. If you're going to repeat the projects then you'll create a tool in Model Builder. Building models. Open a new model, drag and drop the tool from the toolbox to the model, open the tool and enter the parameters. And run the model step and you're done. It's not as easy as that, but it, it is a rather simple method of joining many tools together. In this process they're taking two fields, they're intersecting them, and then I can't read what that says. Maybe that's just the resulting shapefile. But you will use those in future classes. 
create a new toolbox. These may create, be created in folders, geodatabases, or other toolboxes. Right click, new toolbox, and then you rename it. I've created some toolboxes. If I remember, I will show you in class. Add a toolbox to Arc Toolbox. Although accessible from the catalog, it is convenient to place the new toolbox in Arc Toolbox. Here's creating a model. You create a new model, open the model properties, set the model properties. Adding tools to the model, you drag and drop the tools to the model, click to open the tool properties, and then manage the model layout. Again, we're just briefly discussing this so you know what you're aware of it. Set the tool arguments. Colors indicate that the tool is ready to run. That means that there's there are layers or data associated with the tool. Shadow indicates that the steps have already been run. Notice that this shadow exists in this second area. In this case, we're going to set the intersect arguments. This is something where you're going to set it up ahead of time, and then it will run on command. And usually you'll be using, you'll set it up so you can select different layers. I'm not going to discuss this in detail because, again, we're not using it. Here's how you select the arguments. There's much more detail in the book, and when we get to this in future classes, we'll discuss it. Set the output properties, add to display, puts it in the table contents for viewing, intermediate indicates the output is temporary, it will be deleted after the tool completes running. That is used when you have a lot of data being used and you don't want to just waste space saving and storing data that is no longer needed. This indicates a model ready to run, however, if you see, notice there is a shadow under these two tool, tools. They've already been run. So here we have a couple layers. They're making a feature layer, these green items. Then they're intersecting, and then they're running another intersect. Again, this one and this one with a shadow have already been run. So actually, this is a little misleading. You examine the output. Now all of them have been run. You can see the shadow. These are fields or layers, so they wouldn't um, they wouldn't have the shadow. And again, it says shadows indicate that they are run. Running it again. Tools, options, geoprocessing to overwrite existing data sets. When you're testing and setting up a model you will overwrite the data repeatedly so that you can continue to run your tool. Running a model as a tool, setting an input to a parameter lets the user enter value each time it is run. And this is what I was talking about with choosing the layer that you're going to use. This little pop-up, just like the other pre-made tools, will open up and say which layer do you want to use for this process. Parameters from tool arguments, you will set these by right clicking for the most part and going to the properties or parameters. Here's it says model parameter. Models and scripts. And this is a Python script on the left. They can be converted to scripts or programs. They can be written and edited separately from models. You can loop using if then controls. Python is used for Esri. For the most part, Python is what we're using. And we'll learn a little bit of programming language in future courses. And that wraps up Chapter 7 of the Mastering ArcGIS by Mary Beth Price, copyright 2011. And this is for the 5th edition.